Ram Mondol is head of production at Charnambur Bheri on the eastern fringe of Calcutta. Situated almost next to Calcutta's gleaming new sports stadium, Charnambur is a cooperative fishery started by local fish farmers. 314 people farm over 150 acres. Last year, they raised 4,000 quintals of fish. In 1986, Ranjit Mondol and 37 other fish farmers reclaimed a portion of the dried out Nolbon fishery abandoned by its private owners. Ranjit Mondol is a local political leader and was instrumental in the formation of Charnambur. Because of its political links, the cooperative has been allowed to raise fish on this land till the government requires it. The members of Charnambur acted in the context of growing unemployment resulting from the eastward expansion of Calcutta, represented by Salt Lake City and its stadium. <laughs> আমরা এখানে পলিটিক্যাল পার্টি হিসেবে একটা পরিচয় আমাদের আছে এলাকার মানুষের সঙ্গে আমরা দৈনন্দিন মেলামেশা করি বেকার সমস্যা প্রচুর আছে যদিও বেকার সমস্যা আমাদের পক্ষে সম্ভব না সমাধান করা তবু আমরা ভাবলাম যেহেতু চার নম্বর সমিতিরা শুধু পানা হয়ে পড়ে আছে চার নম্বর ফিশারিটা যদি আমরা এলাকার কিছু বেকার ছেলেদের নিয়ে পরিচয় করে মাছ চাষ করি মনে হয় সাময়িক হলো কিছু ছেলে আমরা কাজ দিতে পারবো এবং তাদের দৈনন্দিন যেটুকু প্রয়োজন হয়তো আমরা মেটাতে পারবো এরকম একটা আশা নিয়ে কিন্তু আমরা শুরু করি দ্য সল্ট লেক স্টেডিয়াম ইজ দ্য ক্রাউন জুয়েল অফ সল্ট লেক সিটি ক্যালকাটাস নিউ স্যাটেলাইট টাউনশিপ দি ইস্টার্ন মেট্রোপলিটন বাইপাস connects the township to the city. Today, over 100,000 people live in Salt Lake City, among imposing government buildings, public utilities and services. Conceived by Dr. B.C. Roy and built by all successive state governments, Salt Lake City represents the dominant consensus about Calcutta's future development. All of the 3,000 acres that this township is built on used to be fisheries and had been such for over a hundred years. Of the 3,000, 1,500 belonged to a pioneer cooperative fishery the Biddadhuri Spill Motsho Jibi Shomubai Shomiti. Formed in 1939 by the fish farmers of Dottabad and neighboring villages, the cooperative built its own secondary school, maternity center, brought roads and electricity to its members. In 1962, the land was taken over by the government. The other villages have disappeared, but Dottabad has resisted eviction from a strip of land 
next to the eastern bypass. The fisheries are gone. Though few farm the remaining small ponds, Dottabad's traditional life is shattered. Most of the men work as day laborers on Salt Lake City's construction sites. The women are maid servants in the apartment buildings. Some of the younger villagers have found jobs in the city. A few have got into small trades and sometimes into illegal ones. Those who continue as fishermen raise a small living from these ponds. These ponds they cling to are miniatures of the past. The resourcefulness of Charnombo's members and the uncertainty of their future are facets of an unusual conflict between Calcutta and its eastern hinterland. What makes it tragic is that for 60 years, instead of conflict, Calcutta and this country shared a relationship that seemed to be the ideal way for city and countryside to coexist. We are at the southern tip of Salt Lake City. The fisheries of East Calcutta constitute a major wetland system that ecologists have described as a unique urban resource. Calcutta's eastward expansion critically endangers this resource and raises questions about the basis of the growth of our cities. These fisheries and farms that still remain in the east embody a relationship between the city and the country very different from Salt Lake City. Early maps show that this entire region was a vast saltwater marsh, 81 square kilometers in area, and was called the Salt Lakes. The salt water in these marshes gathered here owing to the tidal behavior of the river Bidtaturi a channel between the Bay of Bengal 
and the Hooghly River. Bay tides brought seawater upriver, flooding and filling these lowlands. The open expanses of water led people to start saltwater fisheries. Further from the river and its channels, rice farming was the main occupation. This area was Calcutta's monsoon drainage basin, the terrain sloping downward from the city. Calcutta used the slope to advantage and channeled out municipal sewage into the Bittathuri. And in 1868, constructed a light railway to dump the city's garbage on the edge of the marsh. The sewage and the garbage gave the history of this country a curious twist. By the late 19th century, the Calcutta Corporation had covered about three square kilometers of the salt lakes with garbage carried by the railway. As the garbage biodegraded to humus, the corporation leased out this acreage for vegetable cultivation. The corporation built a row of slim sewage-fed lakes to serve as irrigation tanks. These lakes are the first links of a hundred-year-old tradition. The farms and fisheries of East Calcutta maintain the entire wetland system by recycling the city's sewage and garbage productively. These garbage farms are the major doorstep source of fresh vegetables in Calcutta's markets. Thapa chashe bise sotto holo ek sathe onik gulo chas hoy. Tar modde potomoto kopi gach, eta kopi gach, eta kopi gach, eta kopi gach. Eita kon ka saag. Tar par eita hoche mulo, eita hoche kumro. এইটা হচ্ছে লাউ এবং এই লাউগুলো কপি কপিটা কার্তিক মাসের প্রথম থেকে দ্বিতীয় সপ্তাহের মধ্যে তৈরি হয়ে যায় এবং তার আগেতে শাকগুলো কুড়ি থেকে বাইশ দিনে রেডি হয় এবং তোলা হয় তিরিশ থেকে পঁয়ত্রিশ দিনের মধ্যে এই মূলোটাকে আমাদের রেডি হয়ে যায় এবং দেড় মাসের মধ্যে এই কুমড়ো গাছ এবং লাউ গাছ এগুলো বাজারে চলার মতো দেড় হাত থেকে দু হাতের মতো রেডি হয় এবং বাজারে রান করে এইগুলো শেষ হওয়ার সাথে সাথেই কবিটা বাজারে যেতে শুরু করছে এবং তার মধ্যে আমাদের উচ্ছে গাছগুলো লাগানো থাকে কবিচার যখনই শেষ হচ্ছে এবং উচ্ছেটা পুরোপুরি ক্ষেত্রাকে কভার করে আবার উচ্ছে ফলতে শুরু করছে তার মধ্যে is a relic of the river Bittathuri. By 1904, owing to natural and man-made reasons, the headwaters of the Bittathuri began to dry up. In 1928, the river was officially declared dead. The salt water receded but the sewage still flowed down the Bittathuri. The waning Bittathuri had for some time caused the fisheries to search for an alternative source of water. In an act of survival, the fisheries turned to sewage, or sweet water as it is called. In the shallow lakes, the suspended solids move to the bottom, leaving clear water on top. 
Under sunlight, the organic solids decompose and produce plankton for fish to eat and blue-green algae that release fresh oxygen into the air. The fish thrive in sweet water. Calcutta's sewage disposal is a carefully planned scheme of resource utilization. City sewers converge at several pumping stations, strategically located on the city's eastern side. The sewage is pumped up from the sewers and out into canals that flow down the eastward gradient. The lock-gated Bantola is the central point of a sewage irrigation system that covers an area of 8,500 acres. It is an active process. The special fishery channels are at a higher level than the main channels. When the fisheries want to increase their sewage inflow, they board up the connector. By taking the boards off, they reduce their intake. A widespread and intricate network of smaller and smaller channels distributes the sewage further and further from the main channels. The country picks up the distribution where the city's system ends. This combined network sustains the last remaining wetlands. The open expanses of water are the lungs that replenish the oxygen for Calcutta's 10 million people. 